All right, good morning and good Monday, everybody. Welcome back. Let's do a quick sound check here, make sure we are rocking and rolling. Cody. Good to see y'all. One moment. Do, 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 do. Okay, cool. All righty, guys. So let's take a quick look here at the economic calendar. I think I got that laying around. There we go. All right. So the agenda for the week today, some Fed speakers, the retail sales, and that's about it for today. And then tomorrow, 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 we will hear from JP the one and the only Jerome Powell at 1.15 p.m. Eastern. And then on Wednesday, we got the Beige Book. The Beige Book at 2 o'clock. A couple more Fed speakers on Thursday. We got the jobless claims and, believe it or not, a few more Fed speakers. And then I think one more Fed speaker on Friday. Yeah, the uh, Chicago Fed president. So jam-packed week on the calendar. And then as far as this market goes... What do we do with this market? I think the key this week is going to be big, big patience. Try to fight the urge to be the first guy or gal to get long, the first guy or gal to get short. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we're very much in a big glorified chop fest. And it's a volatile one. It is a volatile box. Right? They'll dump the MQ 400 points. They'll pop it 500 points. And it's a lot of a lot of nasty back and forth. So we got to be patient. And we're trying to find clarity, right? Clarity in the context of a lot of squeezes. QQQ features, we have the three-day, the two-day, and the daily. The only thing we can take from that for, uh, from now, when they fire, that should trigger the next big move. Whether that be a big move higher or a big move lower. Trying to find clarity as far as, you know, will that be a big move lower or will that be a big move higher? We can do two things. One, anchor to our daily levels. For the NQ here, we have our daily 50, which they've tested one, two, three, four, five, six times. Big support at that daily 50. And then truthfully, resistance, that's kind of up here at these highs, 18,500. If anything, take your 21 EMA. And then from there, you're playing that over-under game. One or two closes back above that 21. And then more importantly, lower time frame buy signals on the big three. Doesn't guarantee we're going higher. Doesn't guarantee we take out that 18,500. Doesn't guarantee the squeeze fires to the upside. But in the context of a big box... Above that 21 EMA with lower time frame buy signals, it does give the bulls a bit of an edge. Vice versa, below that 21, lower time frame sell signals doesn't guarantee we're going lower, doesn't guarantee we're taking out that 50 and seeing that squeeze fire short, but that would give the bears a bit more of an edge. So at the moment this morning, <sighs> the bulls are trying to fight back. They're, uh, they're putting up the good fight. It's about all we can say for now. And then checking out the S&P futures. Up about seven-tenths of a percent. I would give you the same two levels. You got a daily squeeze setting up. A big support will be your daily 50. For the bulls to have a little bit of edge, we're looking for one or two closes back above that 21 EMA. And then nothing but lower time frame buy signals on the big three. Right now, we got a five-minute buy signal, a 15-minute, a 30-minute. And we got that pesky four-hour sell signal. As a result, um, you know, not too much clarity. Very much caught in the box. Now, one thing I think is a bit interesting. If you look at the weekly charts for the small caps and the Dow, They've pulled back to their daily 21, or, or I'm sorry, their weekly 21, which, you know, in most cases, 
if you got good structure, you got a big three score at 10 points out of 12, you got a weekly buy signal, in most cases, a pullback to a weekly 21, not only the end of the world, typically a spot where things should find some support. Same thing here for the Dowski. If the bulls can hold the line there, that might be the end of the selling for the small caps and the Dow. Vice versa, if they lose their weekly 21, and then from here they break lower, then that weekly reversion to the mean might be a little bit of, call it, foreshadowing for what might be to come from the S&Ps and the QQQ. S&Ps close at 51.23, and we've got our weekly 21 down there at 49.50. And on Friday, the QQQ closes 438. And you got your weekly 21 down there around 420. Now, again, the context is, that's a great looking weekly chart. All right, good structure. The structure label is green. It's got a good backbone to it, a good foundation. The big three score is perfect, 12 points. And we've got a weekly buy signal. If you look at that the same way you would look at any other time frame, all right, that could be a monthly chart, it could be a weekly chart, it could be a five-minute time frame, in the context of good trend, in the context of a buy signal and perfect, uh, perfect score, pull back to a rising 21 EMA. I don't think the end of the world, I don't think the end of the trend. Being that it's a weekly chart, of course, if you're locked and loaded on the call side, and you're sitting through that pullback, it could be a little bit unpleasant. So I think we're looking at two outcomes here. Um, outcome A, they break that daily 50, the squeeze fire is short. And then I think we're headed back down to that weekly 21, which I do think in the grand scheme of things eventually would be a really good spot to buy the market. Or option two, they take that daily squeeze, they stabilize it back above that 21 EMA. And then they try to work on taking that squeeze back to the upside. I don't think we'll get that clarity in one day. And potentially, we don't get that clarity this week. So take your daily chart. Anchor to those two big levels, 21 EMA, 50 SMA. And then if you got the big three, the, uh, the clarity within the context of the box will come from your lower time frames. All righty. And then I think another interesting chart, uh, which in most cases would point towards potential for more downside, the almighty dollar, right? The, uh, the dirty Dixie. So check out this weekly squeeze. That thing's rock solid. Fresh momentum cross. The squeeze just fired. Structure is bullish. Weekly buy signal in a perfect 12 out of 12. What that would typically imply is they're going to keep pushing higher, potentially towards 107.50 to 108-ish. And again, typically what that would imply, strength in the dollar, weakness in the equities market. Up goes the Dixie. Down goes the S&Ps, down goes the QQQ, the small caps, the Dow, etc. Could that weekly squeeze continue to fire long? And the S&Ps and the QQQ keep pushing higher. Uh, I mean, in, in theory, that could happen. But as far as probabilities, if they keep on taking the dollar higher from that weekly squeeze, not ideal for the bulls as far as the uh, the equities go. So definitely keep an eye on that. And then I think you want to keep an eye on the VIX, right? The, uh, the return of volatility. In the return of volatility, that's a big part of the reason we're seeing, you know, oh my God, the NQ is up 400 points. You go grab a coffee, you come back, and then the NQ is down 500. A lot of that violent back and forth. A big part of that was that pop here in the VIX. If they can cool that thing off, 
Like take it back to 16, take it back to 15. Better yet, take it back to 14, 13. Then I think the Bulls' job gets a little bit easier. So watch the VIX, watch the dollar, mark up your key levels on the indices. And then the other thing to consider here, um, today's the 15th. We're about a week or two weeks away from big earnings. All of our heroes, the Googles, the Amazons, the Metas, the Microsofts, the Netflix, they all got earnings coming up. And uh, you know, a few of them look pretty damn good. And then a few of them don't. The ones that don't look too good, Apple and Tesla. Now, we'll give Apple a little bit of credit. They are making a bit of progress. Um, the big three score has gone from a negative 12 to a negative three. Far from bullish. Far from the kind of thing I'd want to buy. But progress is progress. And then Tesla. Not too much progress here for Tesla. Negative nine on the big three score. Under the 50, under the 21, under the trailing stop. And they got that slingshot squeeze setting up for a short. The bigger story here for Tesla, I think as it pertains to earnings, you got this big whopper here. Right? A big whopper of a monthly squeeze. Under the monthly trailing stop. Under the 21, under the monthly 50. And now we're getting a bit more of a, a structure break here. 21 EMA crosses under the 50. So I think for the uh, the fate of that monthly squeeze, earnings could be a pretty big deal. If earnings are good, and they're taking Tesla back above that monthly 21, you know, then you're shifting a bit more of the thinking to eventually, they take that squeeze for a push towards 300, 350. If earnings are bad and we get a big gap down in Tesla, then I think they're one step closer to that monthly squeeze firing short. And y'all know the drill, right? When a squeeze fires, regardless of the time frame, they can take that to about two and a half to three ATR. Plus three would be about 365. Minus three would be sub 100. And you might be thinking, yeah, can Tesla really go down 100 bucks? Right? That, that does sound a little bit dramatic, right? Well, inside of the monthly squeeze, it's down about a buck 30. If they can pull it back to the tune of 130 bucks inside of the squeeze, or during that buildup of energy, imagine what they can do if the squeeze actually fires. And they release all that energy. The rules of the squeeze. Take the monthly squeeze from the S&Ps here. And if we're back in November, right, it, it might sound like a little bit of a stretch. That the S&Ps are going to go up a thousand bucks in about four months. Well, here we are. 4,200 to 5,200. Right into that plus three extension. So Apple's getting better. Tesla's a bit more of a sketch ball. And then Amazon. Amazon's moving and grooving. They fired the daily squeeze. They fired the two-day squeeze. I don't have a, a fresh idea here. Or better yet, a fresh setup. Squeeze already fired. It's, uh, it's a little bit too far above that 21 EMA for a great entry. What I would look for, though, um, if anything, more of a day trade kind of thing, if the QQQ can stabilize, watch Amazon for your lower time frame squeezes. Right, the 15 minute, 30 minute, one hour, two hour. Being that they just fired that two day squeeze, could be a little bit of wind to Amazon's back. And then you've got the big Google. And Google looks, uh, yeah, Google. Google looks great. And they just fired that weekly squeeze. 
Would I buy it for a swing trade up here? Not really. If the QQQ can get better, can I take that weekly squeeze? Can I take that momentum that weekly squeeze might provide and then look for a day trade on Google? 15-minute squeeze, 30-minute squeeze, hourly squeeze. I can definitely look to do that. All right, and then there is Meta. Have you ever Meta? Um, Meta's... Yeah. Meta's just Meta. I don't hate it. I don't love it. Netflix. I'm pretty sure Netflix announces this week. Yeah, April 18th. So they announce on Thursday. They're going to kick off the earnings party. So for a swing trade, I think we're cutting it a little bit too close. But not a bad looking daily squeeze. And then Microsoft. So uh, we had an interesting trade on Microsoft last week. It is the ugliest winning trade of my career so far. We bought the calls on Thursday. The 435 out the money calls. On Friday, they spanked it. The thing's down like one, one and a half percent. And I'm sitting there looking at my PL and I'm making money on those calls. So I'm thinking, of course, um, you know, good old thinkorswim. There must be some problem here, right? There, there must be some kind of glitch. But sure enough, we uh, we got lucky. The stock went down. And for whatever reason, they pumped up the implied volatility on those calls. So yeah, my uh, <laughs> my ugliest winning trade ever. We sold the calls for about a 25% profit. And we uh, we ran. We took the money and ran. But as far as it currently sits, a lot of squeezes setting up. Two hour, four hour, a daily, a two day, and a three day. So for the most part, your market leading names, Google, Microsoft, Netflix, Meta, Amazon, they do hold up pretty good. Apple getting a bit better, and then Tesla's Tesla. Tesla's got its own problems. And then the other big boy here would be NVIDIA. And I am looking for a spot here to buy NVIDIA. I'd have to buy it when I get a bit more clarity from the QQQ. But for now, I like the pattern here. All right, huge push. The first back test of your 21 EMA. Structure holds up pretty good. We got a brand new daily squeeze. The key moving forward, they have to continue to print that slingshot signal. They got to keep on cranking out that blue arrow. What that tells me is you got a good trend. You've got good structure. You got a big squeeze. And even though momentum broke below zero, they're trying to bottom it. They're trying to pull that back towards that positive cross. They got to keep on cranking out that slingshot. And then one that I did like last week was coin. Let's go take a look here at coin. They got a little bit of cleaning up to do, but not too shabby. We'll look at the Bitcoin futures. A uh, little bit of a break here today. Yeah, so I might be a little patient as far as the uh, the crypto stuff. And then aside from that, we are long crude oil. At the 90 calls here on crude. Now, what I would love to see would be a brand new daily squeeze. They had a daily squeeze back here. Nice push higher. A little bit of consolidation. If they can throw in a brand new daily squeeze. I would not hate that. And you got that weekly squeeze that just fired long.
And then you've got the monthly squeeze setting up. So we've got the June expiration 90 calls. And yeah, if we can uh, if we can take home a profit here, I think we'll be 7 out of 10 for our last swing trades. Which I think in the context of a very choppy market, if you're uh, if you're batting 70% on your swing trades right now, that's pretty impressive. If I do say so myself. But all right guys and gals, any uh, any questions, anything you want to take a look at? Throw it on at me. And then I'll be back here in the Essentials room at 10.30 a.m. Central. We'll see how things go this morning. And then we'll uh, we'll update there at 10.30. But the Bulls are trying. They're trying to push it. I, I know I'm giving you the box between the 50 and the 21, which I do think are really important levels. The the actual box is a bit more 18,000. Come on. 18,000 to about, why are you fighting me here? Come on. Okay. 18,000 to about 18,005. That's the actual box. If they're above that 21 EMA, they can go on and test the top end of that range. If they're below that 21, they might go test the bottom end. Take it for what it's worth, though. One minute, it'll look like a perfect long. One minute, it'll look like a perfect short. I don't think we have clarity. I don't think we're getting that next big move until we're truly breaking out of that box. They take out the highs here. I think we're going to get the short squeeze of the century. They take out the lows here. Then I think we're boogieing back down to the weekly 21. Everything in between could be a bit difficult. So buckle up. Should be in a, an interesting week. Um, good morning, Captain K. So if you don't trade the crude oil futures, is energy an alternative? I, I think more of an alternative would be USO. USO or one of your oil stocks. They should move a bit more directly with crude, where energy is a bit more of a, a different beast. Now, for what it's worth... I would love to buy a pullback here in energy. Check out this monthly squeeze. She beautiful. She beautiful. If they can take that a little closer to the 21 EMA on the daily chart, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to buy some 100 strike calls. Give that anywhere from three to five months to expiration. With the thinking... If they fire that monthly squeeze to the upside, we're probably going to get energy somewhere near 104, 105. So for a crude oil alternative, I would look at something like a USO with energy being its own, its own entity, its own beast. But yeah, check out the, uh, the monthly charts here, ExxonMobil. Beautiful squeeze, beautiful breakout pattern. Um, who else? Chevron. Chevron not too shabby. EOG. Beautiful. And then Oxy. There was MPC. That's Gonzo. There was Fang, F-A-N-G. And that's a little bit Gonzo. But take that pattern here from FANG. I, I'd look for something similar from XLE, ExxonMobil, etc. Yeah, we might get that this week uh, with any luck. Yeah, it's not uh, it's not too far from that daily twenty one. So within striking distance. Good morning, Mark. I-B-I-T and A-S-M-L. 
right, ASML first. My, my general rule of thumb, if we're about five or 10 days out from earnings, I've got to take a step back. The reason being what I found is you, know, you might have the most bullish, the most bullish setup possible four or five, six days away from earnings. Or earnings becomes a total coin flip. In the event you actually hold those calls, you hold those contracts through earnings. And then vice versa, if earnings is about four or five days away, I, I feel like I'm kind of fighting the clock. Whether I'm buying calls, whether I'm buying those puts, do I really have enough time to catch a big outsized move? If we're a week away from earnings, or better yet, two or three weeks away from earnings, then I think we got a bit more time. But in this case, with earnings on the 17th, so Wednesday, me personally, I take a step back, let them get through the announcement. And then after the announcement, you come back and you reevaluate. It'll be an interesting earnings, though. And I say that because of all the squeezes here. Two hour, four hour, a daily, a two day, and a three day. So they are going into the announcement with a lot of built up energy. So it is possible one way or the other, earnings might kick off the release of energy. Four hour squeeze fires, daily squeeze fires, etc. And then I bit. So for iBit, um, Coinbase, the Bitcoin futures, BITO, I, I think it's a bit of a hurry up and wait kind of spot. Not enough clarity to want to buy it. Not enough clarity to want to short it. If I want to buy iBit, what I'm looking for is one or two closes back above that 21 EMA. Get that thing back above that launching pad. And then on the big three indicator, I want nothing but lower time frame buy signals. At the moment, we have a one hour, 30 minute, and 15 minute sell signal. So cancel those out, flip them into a buy signal, get it back above that launching pad, and then they can work on taking that daily squeeze for a push higher. And again, the futures are a little. Yeah. Would I short it? No. Would I buy it just yet? No, I wouldn't do that either. Back above that 21, lower time frame buy signals. Then I think we're jumping in and looking for a spot to get long. Um, yeah, crude oil's down a half a percent, so not too much to write home about there. It's a pretty typical pattern where you have one daily squeeze, you get that big release of energy, and then you get a bit more of a chop fest. Right. It's catching its breath, drinking that Gatorade. If they can hold it above that 21, if they can keep on printing that buy signal, and then better yet, get a brand new daily squeeze, eventually they can take that daily squeeze Fire it to the upside for the continuation higher. So I don't see any huge issues there just yet. All right, folks on YouTube, not a big short guy. What's going on, my friend? Always appreciate you. Uh, always appreciate you hitting me up on Twitter. And Delta Airlines. Now you guys know I love the airlines. I am a big airplane guy. <laughs> Sarcasm. I am deathly afraid of airplanes. Um, Delta, solid. Yeah, nothing bad I can say about it. Structure label is green. The trailing stop label is green. It's got a daily buy signal. It's got a perfect score of 12 out of 12. The only thing that can make it a little bit better, a fresh daily squeeze. 
Now, then we're talking about an A plus setup. Chef's kiss kind of stuff. However, you've got a four hour, a two hour, and a one hour squeeze. So it's kind of the same concept. Um, you're in an uptrend. You've pulled back to the launching pad. Structure is bullish. The big three is bullish. Now for that next push off that 21 EMA, you're looking for a big release of energy. If they've got a daily squeeze, then perfect. If they don't have a daily squeeze, you can compensate, so to say, with a four-hour squeeze. A four-hour squeeze can definitely pack a punch. So yeah, if you're looking for a long here, I'd keep a lot of my focus this week on that four-hour squeeze. If they can truly get that thing going back to the upside, that might trigger the next push off of that daily 21. It looks good. It looks pretty good. Um, good morning, James. No, the uh, the great box is just a drawing. That's just a, a visual representation of the box that we're currently stuck in. Just a, just a drawing. If you go to your drawing tools, it is the uh, the rectangle. I think a little bit helpful. All right, if I want to get short, you know, break the box this way. If I want to get long, break the box that way. All right, a little push here on the NQ. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six tests of that daily 50. You know, you, you could argue the Bears have had their chance. They've had their chance to kick off a much bigger pullback. They test the 50. They break the 50. The Bulls keep on fighting that good fight. Hmm. I, I I think the one big thing working to our benefit is that multi-squeeze setup here. Daily squeeze, two-day squeeze, three-day squeeze. Ne never mind the two-day and the three-day. If they can fire the daily squeeze long, we're looking for a push into about 19,000, 19,100. Which would imply that somewhere along the way, you're going to find a few good spots to buy it. Meaning, I don't think you have to operate from a position of, uh, of FOMO. If they can take that squeeze higher, we got plenty of room. And then vice versa for a short. If they fire that squeeze short, that might kick off the flush back to the weekly 21. And that's all the way down here at 17,600. About 900 bucks a downside. Right. Somewhere along the way, you're probably going to find a few really good spots to get short. So do I love the chop? Not at all. I am not a fan of the chop. But I've got the understanding we're chopping in the context of a lot of bigger time frame squeezes. Like any other market, when the bigger time frame squeezes fire, that's when you get your best swing trading. All that momentum, all that energy, all that wind at your back. That means we don't have to be in a rush. And that I am a fan of. That I am a fan of. <laughs> yeah, Groovy Jeff, exactly. <laughs> Hey, good morning, Raj. Thoughts on silver? Yeah, silver and gold have been moving nicely. Really, really nicely. Let's go take a look at the weekly. Let's go take a look at the monthly. Oh, uh, yeah, check that out. That's a pretty big monthly squeeze. Perfect 12 out of 12. Structure is bullish. We got the buy signal. 
it's a great looking monthly squeeze. And that would imply if it does fire to the upside, you're looking for a push into about 30 bucks. So my thinking would be we got a beautiful monthly squeeze. And we're a little bit overbought here on the weekly. We're up here at that three ATR. We're a little bit overbought here on the daily chart. So long as they have that monthly squeeze setting up, that would imply the pullbacks should be bought. In that big, beautiful monthly squeeze, pull back to a daily 8 EMA, a pull back to a daily 21 EMA. Unless they lose that monthly squeeze, you should view that as a good buying opportunity. I'm curious, do we have a squeeze in gold on the uh, on the monthly? Um, yeah, we did back here. So potentially moving forward, there could be a similar path for silver. Gold had a monthly squeeze back here in April, May. They fired it to the upside, and they've just hit that they uh, they just hit that monthly squeeze target. It all worked as advertised. Very good stuff. But all right, my friends, I'm gonna let you go here. I gotta run a couple of errands and then get back to the desk asap. So, folks on YouTube, as always, thank you for joining. Always appreciate your time, folks in the essentials room. I appreciate your time as well. And I'll be back at 10.30 a.m. Central for a bit more fun. So enjoy your morning. Be disciplined. Stick to your game plan. Follow your rules. And then at 10.30, we'll get back together. We'll do a recap. And we'll see how things sit at that point in time. Shall not be a dull week. But all right, y'all. Adios.